Hello, this is an assessment for restoration of a Schiedemeyer Grand Piano. Um, it's 190 centimetres, six foot three long, and uh, made in 1897, approximately, maybe 1898, not certain, but it has a lot in common with the Model A Steimer. I mentioned that because the Model A Steimer, the old Model A, is uh, much, much more common than this, and it has lots of similarities, even the casework styling, as you can see there, if you're used to working on pianos and that's similar to Steinway's of that period um, and uh, many other characteristics are similar. You can see that part of the music stands missing there, in fact most of the bits are there. See there's most of the bits for the other side which is obviously a mirror of this side. Um, if you're a piano restorer would like to know what you would do, I think probably we would redo, uh, either, either copy this moulding here rather than trying to stick the pieces together, I'm pretty sure that wouldn't be very successful. And Or maybe redo the whole music stand, one or the other. Obviously it's a bit crumbly, so you can do it in perhaps some more uh, a wood that will last for longer. By the way, these music stands, uh, like the Model A again, um, I'm mentioning that because you lots of you are familiar with that, um, doesn't have a backstay on it, um, but so there's a tendency sometimes for people to force these and then the hinge breaks. It's, I've had that happen on several occasions. So have to be very careful with that. Talking about backstays, um, the pedals here, there's, there's a hole there, as you can see in the middle, that should have a backstay normally. Um, but the pedals are very, they don't move around a lot without the backstay, but there doesn't seem to be any hole up here to fit it into. So if you are used to restoring sheet of air, uh, please let us know if you know what we should do there. But in fact, the pedals are so stable and hardly moving that the backstay is not really going to be that important. And by the way, the pedals are very low, as they've mentioned before on Becksteins have very low pedals. These are, are lower than, I think lower than Steinways normally are. You can see they've angled the pedals to make it lower. There's lots of thought gone into the piano. Um, so if you did want to raise the casters up, uh, uh, sorry, the, uh, so yes, the casters up with them, um, the caster cups, we, we do that very often if you're a tall person or more legroom, that's very useful. What I mean is the pedals wouldn't be too high off the floor because with some pianos they do that and the pedals are much too high. While we're under here, the soundboard is in extremely good condition. I don't see if you have any cracks or beginnings of cracks at all. Uh, so that's extremely encouraging. There's a lot of good things to say about this piano, but as we'll see in a minute, it definitely needs a lot of work on it. Continuing with the comparison of the Model A, um, as you can see, it's 85 keys, uh, 85 notes, not 88. The three top ones are missing, um, originally from Duck Sun and Pinker. This is actually uh, not far from Gloucester. That was where, I don't know, I think they've probably sold it. That's beg your pardon, probably not originally from there. That was sold by them um, and uh, recent, more recently. So you can see the Sheed Mayor name here. There's two. Shida Mayors, I'd be interested to know if you're a subscriber or watching in on this and know uh, how to distinguish between the two. There's two listings of Shida Mayor. One of them gave us a date of 1897, which we've taken because it says J and P and P S. Um, but uh, you may be more familiar if you're watching this and be able to help leave a comment about Shida Mayor dating because the other one gave us 1907, but I'm almost 100% certain that this is the earlier date because it's so similar to an old Model A uh, as, uh, as it makes a good comparison really. Now the case works a uh, beautiful rosewood. We have restored a very similar piano last year actually and uh, we, we were encouraged by the results of that. You can see the lid's been up as we've said many times in other videos and so uh, it's faded but not faded there. Um, by the way it's really quite close to this radiator which is on. Um, <coughs> now I, I, it's it has dried out, whether that radiator is causing it to dry out more, it could well be. Um, but uh, definitely dried out, as we'll see in a minute, some of the results of drying out. By the way, we found those things in the piano, um, that one of them which was, I think, probably impeding the mechanism between two keys. Now one of the first tests we'll make is the tightness of the pins, and 
there is a problem with this, as we'll hear in a minute. Uh, lots of loose pins, and this is the area usually where they go loosest, and the, the base area too. These are very, very small pins. This is a standard side leave, live lever, um, and it's wobbling around because the pins are very small. Um, which is an indicator that it's original pins. Uh, I'm almost certain about that. There is actually one string missing here, um, which hasn't been replaced. Now, normally strings break here and they can be wound down and wound back up the other side. So you can usually use the same string again. So I don't know what happened there. So I say normally at least nine, nine out of 10 times, probably more like uh, 19 out of 20, they'll break at that point. So you can use the same string again. So that string went round the pin and back up again. So you just unwind some on the tuning pin uh, a bit and then wind it up on the other side. I'm mentioning this, I'm sure most of you, if you're a technician, would know this and obviously will know this, but um, just for those who perhaps aren't aware of it, um, it's very important because if you can keep the same string, then obviously it's going to match tonally and won't, obviously you won't have to wait for it to stretch to match the other ones. Now let's listen to the piano. <laughs> And when it's as out of tune as much as that, it's almost definitely going to be loose tuning pins. There's a beautiful match here, by the way, and they put the extra um, copper wound strings on here. Uh, very fastidious firm, she de mer. She. And very good break point, well, of course, that's very out of tune because it's got a loose pin. Throaty bass, similar um, to Model A again. Actually, I really think the tone of this piano is exceptional. And looking a lot around this area where the where the break point is here on the treble, you often get the bridge is uh, sorry, I beg your pardon. The the, the down bearing is not uh, needs 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 improving, or the sample's lost its down bearing. The sample's lost its crown. It's gone down a bit. And around this area, it shows. But really, this hasn't suffered at all. Even being drying out, it's not suffered. It just has a very full tone. You're looking for a full tone there. Really important to distinguish whether the tone is full. Not lost anything, really, so that's going to turn into an excellent instrument. The key tops, by the way, there's one chip here, and they're slightly in under. Uh, 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 slightly worn as you, you can actually feel a, a dip in the keys they've been played a huge amount as we'll see when we look at the hammers in a minute as well but that one i don't know if we're going to be able to repair that normally can fare small chips pretty invisibly but that one we may have to take the key top off uh on that one i don't know if we can manage to repair that one now the the, the action uh, piano takes apart in the same way as steinways two we're lifting off this front rail and then it it's exactly the same system as Steinway's. Stuttgart's a long way from Hamburg, so uh, I don't know how they ended up being so similar to Steinway, but um, perhaps if you're in the trade, you'll know whether they work together at all. So there we are, I take it out the same as the Steinway. That might fall off if we're not careful, but I think it's pretty uh, much okay. So looking at, in at the action here, uh, that's, that's a typical, uh, here it differs from Steinway. Steinway have their own s system, it's pretty unique, but this is like a um, other makes of action. Now the piano needs regulating, this is middle C, lifting it up. You can hear the squeak, I think, probably on the video. And as it sets off, there's another squeak. And the frame in P is being able to see actually how far up the hammers are going. Now looking at the hammers, they're extremely worn and flat, as we've seen many other times that can get like this. It, you know, just been tuned, never any work done on it, um, and uh, played a lot. So they're definitely more than refacing. I think definitely re redoing those, replacing them. Besides which, um, we could do with replacing the roller here. And so, as we said before, hammers, shanks, and rollers. And that also will make these hinges tight. The hinges are getting very loose. That's I can wobble that from side to side quite easily. Um, so that hinge is loose and that one too and that one too. So all these hinges are loose. Much quicker and easier and better to replace hammer shanks and rollers with German parts. So Renner or Arbel um, both make really excellent parts. So we would use those. Um, and if you can see on here, the graphite's worn. That's another re reason for it squeaking, but also with the rollers changed, um, 
and lubricated dry lubricant then we will get rid of the squeak certainly won't be any problem there may be other things squeaking too maybe that um the, the felts so i can't really get far enough down here you can see the uh, uh, capstans here felts above that might might need a lubrication too i'm sure they would nice dry lubricants on the middle too so uh, lots of work to do so the main work would be hammer shanks and rollers to improve the piano um, and then as much work as uh, can be afforded to do really uh, would be really useful now there has been there's evidence of moth having been in the piano here but underneath the keys it's not too bad if it escaped very well some of the hammers we've seen a little bit of uh, moth damage here there but really very very little in the whole piano amazingly since there has definitely been moth in the piano as you can see see here as well so it's escaped somehow now, earlier on I was talking about regulation let's look at this uh, f sharp here um it's it actually the spring's actually working on that one but it isn't working i think on oh, it's just working on that one it's amazing after that all that those years that this spring here can still be functioning well a testimony to extremely well good manufacturer of pianos um the, the regulation has gone out obviously so it needs to, and it's very notchy with the roller not being changed so that's going to help tremendously now the actions are 56 grams a little bit heavy therefore should be like less than 50 ideally um but uh it's not just that it's lots of resistance going through so you can actually hear it squeak as it goes down and it's just resisting and making it feel even worse, very uneven. Um, those ones, see, that's much heavier. Sorry, it's not much, yeah, it's a bit heavier. And uh, that's much lighter. So there's huge unevenness to the action too. So after putting the new hammers on, we'll have to weight the whole action. So that's an assessment of a Schiedemeyer grand piano made in 1897, 1898. And uh, just, I'm very impressed with the build on this piano. It's really difficult to play in terms of the, getting an, any finesse on the action, so that's that's very frustrating. And the other thing which is really important is just the tuning pins are loose, so repinning the piano at least. You might be surprised that I wouldn't say restringing. It's just that the strings are so good on these very old pianos that if you do restring, then you lose that throatiness if you're not careful, even with the best string makers, the best German spring makers, to re reproduce that. There's no bass strings broken, so there's an option there to keep the bass strings. Uh, and that, if you have any comments on that, I'd just like to discuss that with me. It'd be really useful, because I have a dilemma every time we change the bass strings. Knowing that even the very best strings, it'd be very, very hard to match that sound. The manufacturers obviously decide and thought carefully, these top manufacturers, very carefully about exact bass strings that they want on the piano. And the break point and the, the way they've changed from copper to, to steel is just phenomenal. So listening to that is, is it just words aren't enough to express how good that is. So certainly we can change the bass strings when we repin, re obviously. And, the, and if you're going to do things like um, taking the whole piano apart, the last sheet of mare we, uh, seed mare we, sorry, if you think I pronounced that wrong, please let me know. The last sheet mare we did um, everything, literally the rest plank, um, reconditioned the soundboard, the frame, uh, resprayed and so on, and uh, just did everything, all the case for any case for repair, a full, we even put the original legs back on it. These, this has got original legs, so that's very encouraging. Um, and uh, obviously, uh, repolish the piano. We do French polishing, and it takes us about 70 hours to do. So it's really top, you know, as good as we can get, really. Original polishing, make it look how it was originally. But if it's just a matter of making the piano play well, then obviously we're going to do a lot less than that. Hammond shanks and rollers, definitely. Um, we'd like to change other felts too. Um, the key felts and so on, they'll be improved definitely with replacing, but the main thing is hammer shanks and rollers, they're the ones. On these top quality pianos, felts do wear really well, but it's been played so much, this piano. It's really hard to play, it's very un uncomfortable to play this piano. It just, even though the key weight's 56 or so, it still, it resists too much. 
it's got squeaks on it and um, just in, in crying need of work done it's just been tuned I think and not work, any work done on it Froaty tenor. I've played this piano all day long, even even with the action being bad, the tone is so good, really. So it's really looking forward to improving this piano, either fully restoring it or doing the most important jobs on it. So I hope um, that's been helpful and uh, if you've been listening and got a comment to make, I'd just love to hear from you. Thank you very much for listening.